Good morning, Hi Elementary. This is Miss Davis back with another video. Today is Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. We're halfway through the week. What up? We are going to be learning today about social distancing. Okay, we're going to be talking about social distancing, which is when we ask people, when the government asks people to um, keep their distance from um, people outside of their household. Um, so that's the six feet apart rule, that's closing restaurants and um, inessential businesses that don't need to be open so that people aren't all packed in together. The idea between, behind social distancing is that we can keep the disease from spreading. So remember yesterday I talked about viruses are itty bitty and so they get trapped in um, when you cough or sneeze, or even just a little bit when you breathe, they come out of your body. So what we want to happen is we want people to keep apart enough that the disease gets stuck and it only, it doesn't get to pass from person to person. It just stays in the people it's already in, goes through its whole system and then stops. Okay. I'm going to talk to you guys about some of the ways we can help social distancing in our communities, some of the ways um, the country has implemented social distancing, and some no rules and regulations you're going to have to follow for just a bit, okay? So, right now, we are seeing a lot of people catch it, but we're also seeing those numbers not get as high as some of our worst expectations because a couple weeks ago our country and our states implemented social distancing okay so you guys know like you haven't gotten to go back to school since spring break you um they closed down restaurants a week after that so you weren't able to go out and eat um, places like walmart and heb have new hours so they're not going to be open as long and they let um, certain populations shop at certain times so that they don't have to worry about being in contact with everybody else, okay? So all of that social distancing went into effect and we asked people to be really, really careful not to go visit their friends, not to have dinner parties, not to hang out with their neighbors, and we wanna see if we can stop this disease from moving around, okay? So right now, epidemiologist so an epidemiologist for all of you out there is somebody who just studies how diseases transfer in a population so we know a population is a group of people in a certain area that was one of our vocab words that we've talked about a lot so don't tell me you don't know what that means okay so they study how disease in that population gets from one person to another person to another person until it gets to everybody Okay, and we want to listen to them because they know how these things work and so they know the best way to stop it. So right now, they say that each person that's sick or that's infected is right now infecting between two to three other people. Okay, so if each person that's sick infects two to three other people, then we end up with something like this. So this is our first person that got sick. Okay, and they infected two people, those two people infected three people each, and then now we have six people, and now we have 18 people, and then we have 54 people. Okay, so one person got 54 people sick because they were moving around and bumping into each other. Okay, what we want to do is we want to keep that number really low so if this one person say they only went say they you know they saw these two people but say this second person say they stayed inside their house they didn't go to any barbecues they didn't go to any sports games they didn't go um, to a restaurant and now that person's out of the running and so we see that now we've cut our number of infected people in half so instead of having 54 people sick, now we only have 26 people, 27 people sick. But we can do better than that, okay? 
what if this person also observed social distancing? So what if this person also stayed home in their house and didn't talk to their neighbors and didn't go play a game of basketball with their friends? They um, only went to the store when it was super, super necessary. And when they did, they used their hand sanitizer and didn't touch stuff. Whoop. We're down a whole bunch again. All right, and we can do better than that. So say this person also observed social distancing. This person also stayed in their own bubble. They also stayed in their house and they went outside to exercise, but they didn't get close to anybody or strangers or anything. Cut that down. So instead of having 54 people sick and then 27 people sick, now we're down to, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We have dropped that number a whole, whole lot. And that's why it's so important to keep your distance. Okay. So yesterday, Greg Abbott had a press conference. Remember I said I was going to watch that press conference and I was going to tell you what he said. One of the things, it's time to go to the library. Woo, it's Wednesday. Um, one of the things he talked about was that we are now under social distancing guidelines until April 30th. So that means for the entire month of April, we're going to have to keep this up. Okay, so there's not going to be any school, any games, any restaurants, any non-essential stores until April 30th. Okay, and not only that, that means you guys need to do your part too. So we're closing all the businesses, but we need you guys to do your part. So what you need to do is you need to make sure you're at home as much as possible. Okay, because there are some people that can't stay home right now. Some of your parents probably can't stay home right now. They have to go to work every day still, or, um, you know, they have to go out and around and do um, some things. Maybe they have to go visit your grandparents, make sure they're okay, make sure they're getting food. Maybe, maybe they're going out every day to pick up food from you guys or your packets from school, okay? So I'm gonna walk you through a scenario. What happens? If your parent goes to work and they shake hands with a coworker who's sick, now your parent has been not infected, but they've been exposed. Okay, so they could be infected. So they go to work and they hang out with this coworker who shook hands with somebody that was sick and then shook your parents hand or just was near them and so they've been exposed and then your parent comes home to you all right so now you're in it but then you go hang out with your friend all right because you think oh it's not that big a deal they live right next door i'll just pop over we'll play we'll have a little play date it'll be fun we'll play basketball or we'll play outside in you know the yard you so you hang out with your friend now your friend is connected guess what your friend when they go home they live with their grandmother and remember we talked about older people are more at risk okay younger people can get it too though so this is not just about your grandparents this is about you your parents your siblings and your grandparents your grandparents great uncles your great grandparents they're all at a higher risk okay so your friend goes home to their grandma or grandpa and now that whole connection it got all the way from the co-worker to your parent, to you, to your friend, to your grandmother. So that's basically like it's a direct transfer right there. Okay. So what if you and your friend hung out online? So you played an online game, you played a video game. Guess what? This co-worker no longer has a direct line to a grandparent and everybody's gonna be okay. You guys might be a little uh, connected, but if your parent is really careful with washing their hands, not getting close to anybody, even when they do have to work to, with them, we can even break that chain so that they don't bring it home to you and you don't pass it on to anybody else and nobody else passes it on to somebody that could get really sick. Remember that pie chart I showed you yesterday about how most of us can get it and not know we have it? So even if you feel fine, even if you're like, Miss Davis, I don't feel sick at all. I'm so healthy and so is my friend and so is my neighbor and we should go hang out with them because they're fine. 
He could not be. So the best course of action is just to say, if I had it, would I hang out with these people? And you wouldn't. So right now, I know it's boring. I know you're tired. I know you're so, so fed up with your house and your room and your family right now. But we need to do a little bit more and we can still go outside. So actually, exercise is very important. So those daily dojo activities that you go for um, your PE, try doing them outside every once in a while. Okay, get some fresh air. Go out. Just make sure I'm here. You're over here. Not here, not here, here, six feet, okay? Because if somebody sneezes or somebody coughs, all of those viruses go right out and they can get on you, okay? And make sure if you're touching any hard things, so like playground equipment or doorknobs or stuff, you're washing your hands immediately afterwards because remember I said those viruses stay on those things. So wash your hands. Okay, so all of this is to say that what we want to do is called flatten the curve okay so the idea is is we might not necessarily stop the disease but we'll definitely keep it from hitting too many people okay so this is what we're talking about when we say flatten the curve so this is, it's everybody acts as normal. Everybody goes to school, goes to games, goes to work. Look how fast people get the disease, okay? But if everybody stays home, if everybody stays home all the time, this is what it could look like, okay? This is what we want. This is called flattening the curve. Now this line, remember yesterday when I was pointing at our, um, bin, at our little pie chart and I said, these people, and I talked about how doctors are going to be really busy, okay, and how we need to make sure that we're not overloading them because they only have so many doctors and so many hospitals. This is the line of how many hospitals, how many doctors, and how many beds, and how much medicine we have, okay? So see how this goes up over that line? That means if we just walk around like normal and we're not being careful, all of these people aren't going to have hospitals, okay? So when they get sick, it's going to be really, really bad, okay? So we want to make sure we keep this line like this so that even those people who get sick, even at the worst, worst part, we still have plenty of hospitals and plenty of medicine and plenty of doctors so everybody can get the help they need, okay? Now, what happens if we do a little bit of social distancing? Like, you don't go to school and you can't go to ball games, but... You still, you know, like you go play with your friends. Maybe you have like a dinner party like once a week where your family and another family eat together. Guess what? That line still goes over, okay? A little bit isn't enough. This is one of those things where you have to do it all the way, okay? You can't have to do it. You got to do it all the way or nothing, okay? Now... I'm going to talk about Greg Abbott's press conference real quick, and then I will be done. I promise. So this is going to be shorter than the last one. Okay. What our governor, remember, governor is the head of the executive branch. He's the one that's in charge of Texas. Okay. So he's like the president of Texas. So what they talked about at the press conference yesterday is that so far, our social distancing in Texas is doing really well. Okay. So we still have like 97% of our hospital beds are still ready to go, okay? So, but we need to keep that up. So it's extended until April 30th, okay? So the whole month, you're off. You will also be off school until May 4th. Now, kids, you might be excited about that. Parents, very sorry. We will keep putting out as much work as you need and you will keep reaching out. We are here to be partners to you. If you need anything, let us know. I know you were not ready to sign on as a teacher. You did not expect that to happen this year, but we are ready here to help you with anything if you need it, okay? So May 4th is when we will be going back to school, potentially. We're still gonna think about that and we're gonna look and see if we can keep our social distancing up then we can stop it on April 30th. If we can't, we might need to extend into June and or May. 
And then your entire summer, we could go into July even if you don't stay home. Okay? The longer it takes people to stay home and stay away from everybody else, the longer it takes for everything to get back to normal. Okay? So, essential services and activities are still going to be going on. So, you're still going to have restaurants, but you have to pick things up. You're still going to have grocery stores and banks and um, supply stores. So, things like Lowe's and Home Depot, those will still be open. Okay? And you can go to them if you need to, but you can't just wander around. All right? So every law enforcement officer in Texas, so that means anybody down from, you know, everybody from the sheriff down to just like a, um, just a regular police officer can stop you. And if you are breaking social distancing without it being something like, oh, I'm going to the grocery store or, oh, I'm going to work. You can get a fine, you can get jail time, and that jail time is like 180 days in jail. Or you can be forced into quarantine. So for two weeks, you can have enforced mandatory quarantine where they make sure you stay in your own space. So do not break social distancing unless it is important, okay? So don't hang out inside, outside your apartment. Don't hang out in a parking lot with your friends stay inside. You can play with your friends online or you can wait and do your best to be really good right now. And then you can play with your friends as soon as possible on April 30th. Okay. Now, um, unemployment is another thing that they talked about, um, yesterday. I know right now a lot of us are facing struggles with unemployment and getting paid. So, Greg Abbott, our governor, has said that a lot of the time wait that we're waiting on that is due to the fact that everybody's been overloading the system. There's just so many people. So he's he's put some of the govern, um, government employees, they're going to be working on unemployment, on processing claims so they can get you that as soon as possible. The money is there. The federal government has given us the money and it will get passed out. We're just going to work on it, okay? Um, there will be a little bit of an uptick in unemployment benefits right now um, because they do know that everybody is out of work and they are waiving some of those re um, requirements for like you must apply to this many jobs per week um, because they do know that nobody is hiring. But please check the unemployment website for, you know, full details. Um, but I did know that those claims should be going through faster. The stimulus check that we are all getting um, for that 1200 you it's going to be based on your 2019 IRS tax returns. Um, some of us have not done them yet because the extension was passed until June. So if you have not done them, the IRS does have a short form that you can fill out just so that they can get your information to pass out that check, okay? Um, it will be an additional 500 per child, okay? But, and this is important, it is only those with social security numbers. So anybody that does not have a social security number is not going to be getting this check, okay? Because that's how they're passing them out. So the IRS has your information and they will be passing them out. Now, those of you who might not have done your taxes for a couple of years and you don't, so the IRS doesn't have your information, they are, do not worry about them hitting you with back fees right now. If you just fill out that small little emergency form, um, that will be good enough to get that assistance check. Um, and they will do their best to make sure that everybody gets what they need. Okay. So 1200 for like an individual like me, it's just me. I don't have any kids. I'm just, you know, I make under... The amount that it needs to be and that's like seventy five thousand um couples married couples it can go up to i think it was twenty five hundred but i will check on that okay and then like i said 500 per child now that child needs to be your dependent okay um so they need to be listed under your name now that is all the information i have for you today shorter than yesterday not by a ton super sorry i know i will do better about that i promise okay um, question, question, question. Okay. My cat has been playing around over here, making a lot of noise this whole thing. I'll let you know. Her name is Hazel. Hazel the cat. 
all right so you just need to message me and message me um i did have some parents and students who were having a little problems with that please do not comment on the class story as that gives the answer to everybody else because they can see your comment please just message me directly so instead of um commenting on the class story go into messages and just send me a message with the answer okay so my cat's name is hazel that is h a z e l all right um this is goodbye i will see you all tomorrow have a great day have a great wednesday all right bye bye